Good morning, everyone, and welcome. This is Melissa Armo with the Stock Swoosh, and I'm going to review here the year to date, 2019, which is, quite frankly, almost over. It's hard to believe we're into the last several weeks of this calendar year. Not quite two months left, almost, almost two months left in the year, but what a year it's been. So I'm going to review the Stock Swoosh Show Live Trading Room Advanced Trader. This is Advanced Trader with an Advanced Trader uh, result, which I'm going to go over here uh, when we go through the trades, but it's about a risk of $2,000 per trade. So for 2019, this is year to date through the end of last week, so that would be November 8th, 463,647. So that is a really good uh, number considering the risk. Now, $2,000 per trade is not a small risk, okay? And even if you have that size of an account to take the risk, I think that you have to make sure you know what you're doing before you risk that. So that is one of the reasons that I require people to take my class, to join and take the Golden Gap course before they're eligible to become members for the live trading room. Because if you don't know what you're doing, how are you gonna get these results? So I started trading in 2008. Wow, it's almost 2020, can you believe it? So almost 2020, so it seems, seems like a long time, but in the scope of life, I guess, it, it, you know, there's lots of people that are out there, and you may be one of them, that have been attempting success in the market for longer than I'm even alive. So I, I really think that, again, I credit my success to the focus. So every day I get up and I look for stocks that are gapping and I rate them with my system. And that's what you would learn if you want to join the live trading room with me. So I use a 26 point rating system. I always in the morning go to the short side first. If I don't find anything I like to the short side, then I go to the bullish side, um, unless there is a clear, clear gap that stands out to the upside that's better than any shorts. But if you end up joining with me, you'll learn all about this. So if you'd like more information, you can email me at melissa at thestockswoosh.com or call me at 929-3200-GAP. Follow me on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, or Skype. So right now it's earnings season. It's a great time to trade. There's lots and lots of gaps every single solitary day. And so there's a lot to pick from. So it makes it very beneficial if you want to learn how to do this. It's a great time to begin trading. So started out the year, the year was very bullish at the beginning part of the year. We, we rallied off in, in December, the end of the year, up through into January. <laughs> so the year, the year started out very bullishly. But just so you know, the trains that I'm looking for each morning, the gaps, are on their own. Doesn't matter what the market's doing. So in January was off the beginning of the year. SPY, first trade loser, second one winner. Closed then uh, the 9th and 11th. So Lulu was a nice winner. Netflix was a nice winner. Done Netflix a lot this year. Sig lost in the first trade. And then the retakes were the second and third trade. So you'll learn that in the class too. Sometimes I do a retake. Of course, it has to set up. XP didn't work on the 18th. Q's was a winner. And again, going through these, you can see here, I usually typically focus on one stock a day. SWK, huge winner. If I ha have my goal and reach it right out of the gate in the morning, I'm usually done. So we usually stop trading between 10, 10.30 in the morning, unless for some reason, and you can see the first trade fails, then I will do a second trade. Uh, like NKC was a loser, Q's was a winner. But most of the time, I stop right after the first pick. Getting into here the end of January, again, good start to the year. Cat was a winner, GME was a winner. T, first trade lost, second one worked. Q's and the market were bullish on that day in the 30th. Um, those were good longs. 31st was a big one. X winner, Q's winner, and V was a loser. Started out in February. Started to get busy towards the middle of February then with earnings season. No trades the 1st and 4th. Off in the 5th, EA was a loser. Twitter was a nice winner. Another one we've done quite a few times this year. And CARB, second trade, worked. Then the 11th, no trades. UAA was a loser. Gil was a winner. SPY was a winner. Tiva was a loser. SPY, first trade loser, second one, big winner. Again, you'll learn all this in the class about the retakes. And when, when, when I get up in the morning when I'm focused, I will stick on that one ticker symbol. And I, I really, again, it's about focus, size, timing, and then the exit as well as the target. So market was closed here the 18th. Walmart was a good one on the 19th. CVS 
This was back, gosh, February. DPZ, really nice gap on the 21st. And then a couple more good ones here into the end of February. And closed out February pretty strong with the HPQ. Then March started out, again, the beginning of the year was very bullish. SPY needed a retake. Q's didn't work on the 4th, off for TV in the 5th. Trip did not work target, didn't work the first trade, second trade did on the 6th. KR was a nice winner on the 7th. And cost, cost was a big winner. Options trades, day trades, these are all day trades. I do not call the same trades for the options letter and the day trades. They're different trades, but sometimes I will have a similar similar call. And it's interesting because uh, those are the ones you definitely don't want to miss. <laughs> When I, if you're on the options letter and the day trades, those are the ones you definitely want to focus on. And then getting into the middle part here of March, Stitch Fix was one of those gaps that just didn't follow through at all. DG was a nice winner. Then into the end here of March, uh, there was a couple good ones. Nike, Nike was a few plays this year. Um, off then in the 26th, Len was wild but worked. Big, big move then on that in the 27th. Lulu was a winner. And then April started out, the spring started out pretty good. Again, up at this point now, it's earnings season. BA worked. Disney was the big winner pretty much for the entire month of April. The day trades and the options all, all around. The 11th BBUI loss, WTW was another big winner. Again, Disney, the 12th, two trades in that that worked. Um, then got into the latter part of April. Apple was very bullish. That was a big winner on the 17th. Rome was closed 18th and 19th. And then Twitter there again, nice winner. IRBT was a good one. I think that was earnings. The 25th, XLNX was the big winner. Two nice trades in that. Um, MMM did not work out. Mo was a big winner. The 26th, INTC was a loser. WDC, big, big winner in the 26th. No trades in the 29th. GLW lost. WY lost. MGM was a big winner. Two trades in that. Apple, again, huge winner on May 1st. And that was really what I thought was like the peak of the hype of the market going into the summer, which was, which started out early. It was the beginning of May. Bunch more trades in here then to start out May. Again, earning season in here, getting into the busy season. Lots of good trades. Lots of positive trades. No losing days in that week. No losing days in this week. I mean, I was just, May was a really, really, really strong month. Baidu was another one like Disney where we did it over and over and over again. So many good trades in Baidu. So many good trades in the market this year. Then June started out, Facebook was a winner. Uh, started out a little slow, then got going with Domo. Lily was a winner, CRM. Lily again, two days in a row there. HDS did not work in the gap. And a bunch of other trades in here, some break-even trades in the market. The market sloshed around in June. Adobe was a nice one. That was earnings. CCL was a winner on the 20th. And BYND was another one that ended up being a big winner uh, overall. Options letter and for the day trades in, in June. Uh, CAG was a winner on the 27th. No trades in the 28th. Getting into July. Typically, again, earnings season is a busy time. People think trading is slow in the summer, but not if it's earnings season. BBVY was a nice winner. Netflix was a nice winner. AMAT, UPS was a great winner. Tuzza was huge. Starbucks was nice. And UAA and T2. That was the end of July. Then into August, BYND again. Nice one in there. That stock can really, really move. Solid weekend here to start out August. Again, really solid week, second week, into the third week here in August. Absolutely no losing days. Target was a big winner in the 21st. Foot Locker, big winner in the 23rd. Uh, there's Ulta again, did that a bunch of times. Target was a nice winner. Spy didn't work out that one day at the end of August, uh, but Target was a nice winner. And Ulta again, another one we played a few times in here. Then September started out. Right after the Labor Day, FDX was a winner. X was a winner. Spy was a winner. Again, getting into this, this fall season, which typically is the most busy time, which is starting to be in October. So here we are into this week. 
absolutely no losers. Great week. Again, slow at the beginning part here, but great, great week. And again, W Day, big winner. Adobe took two shots, but worked. IBM, no losing days that week. Then it was October 21st, no trades. Again, that's something else people will learn from me when not to trade, when there isn't anything good. MCD was just absolutely huge. One of the biggest moves that we've seen, and again, that was pretty much the home run for the month of October for the day trades. Twitter was really good as well. Uh, MCD, though, was really just phenomenal. <laughs> Room closed the 25th. Spy was a winner. BYND on the 29th just did not work out. That failed, actually, and that was an earnings gap. Failed. Pulled it around with a long, which was TXRH. That was a long. Yum. Hit it, hit it, hit it. Another great one. Another great gap. Another nice winner. Went after MCD again on the 4th. And then the 5th was Uber Shake Shack twice. CBS was a solid quick one. A bullish gap on the 6th. Spy and EXP was a big, huge day. Huge day, but that was a morning exit in that. And Disney, first trade failed. Second one ended up taking out the stop, holding it through at Disney. It came back on that one, and that was really wild. We'll see where Disney goes this week. High expectations for those earnings, so we'll see if the options are going to work. But ended up pulling it out on the Friday the 8th. So overall, it has been a very, very, very strong year. I've been very focused this year. Again, I typically try to focus on one stock a day. That's just what works best for me. And I think that when people start to do this, they'll have better results. You have to have a system that works, though. If you don't have a system that works, you're not going to be successful no matter what you do. So I created my system myself, and I teach people how to do it in a class once a month. If you'd like to learn how to trade part-time or full-time to work for yourself, you can take my Golden Gap course, and then you would have access to be able to join the live trading room. So the class is November 7th, 16th and 17th, 9 to 5 Eastern Time. Cost of the class is $64.99. Class is online. You can be anywhere in the world and take it. Now, you must take the class in order to join the live room. But the room isn't free. The room is $500 a month or four grand a year after the class, just so everyone knows. So you can't join the room uh, until you do the class. And again, it's because I want people to be successful and understand what they're doing and why. So there's also a Golden Gap course combo. If you want to pay for the Golden Gap and the Trends together, $69.99 together, save $500. Trends course is November 19th. You can do both and save. You will learn long-term trends in the Trends course, which is valuable for day trading, swing trading, and options trading. And if you want to subscribe to the annual newsletter, it's $59.99 for the options newsletter. Again, these are not the same trades as are in the day trading room, but there's no prerequisites for this. So you don't have to take the Golden Gap course to sign up for the letter, but I definitely think it's helpful. And I definitely think there's a higher chance for you to do better on the letter managing the trades because you'll learn how I'm coming up with the picks in the class. If you'd like more information, email me at melissa at thestockswoosh.com. Have a great day, everyone.